Hi, my name is Anya, and the case I'll be talking about today is a screwdriver rapist or making s'more popcorn. So if you like this video, give it a like, comment, and subscribe to my channel for more videos. And don't forget to hit that notification bell to be notified every time I upload. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Today I'm going to be talking about the screwdriver rapist while making s'more popcorn. Disclaimer, I'm telling the case as I perceived it. I mean, no disrespect to the victims or the victim's family. Let me know in the comments if I missed something about the case. Let's begin. William van der Merwe was born in December 1951. He was the ninth child. When William was 15 months old, his father passed away. Growing up, William grew up in poverty, but he also felt unloved and utterly rejected. During his school years, he struggled greatly in school and was later diagnosed to be dyslexic. He got into a lot of trouble in his youth. He was often stealing or breaking to homes. He was sent to a reform school. After 18 months, he left the reform school and stayed with his sister and her husband, where he got a job laying carpets. During this time, he met a girl. She was pregnant at the time they met. Many say that William regarded the relationship more seriously than she did, since she was seeing other boyfriends as well. They ended the relationship after a violent argument. William first felt the urge to rape when he saw a pretty girl walking in the street, and he tried to chat her up, but she ignored him. In that moment, he said that he felt angry and held great resentment towards society. In a fit of anger, he pulled out a knife and placed it under the girl's nose. He enjoyed the look of fear in her eyes. It gave him immense power. After that incident, he would approach girls in secluded places like lifts and he would either expose himself or he would make indecent suggestions or he would actively touch them. Shortly after these events, he was identified by one of the victims and taken to police custody. He was 19 at the time. He was convicted of two counts of attempted assault and one count of attempted rape. He did not serve any prison time. He was instead placed into his sister's care and ordered to undergo treatment for dyslexia. Unfortunately, only a few months later, he snapped. He raped at least nine women between September and November of 1971. During this period, he also started using a screwdriver instead of a knife to scare his victims. This is the reason why he is called the screwdriver rapist. The way that he would go about this vile act is that he would dress in white overalls, visit home, claiming to be an electrician. In one case, he raped a young woman after threatening her and her child. In another case, he tried to rape a student whom he gagged and tied to the bed. She kept screaming, like no shit dude, of course she's going to keep screaming. But his solution in his pea-sized brain was to smash a wine bottle over her head. But that did not work and she kept screaming, so he ran away. Mr. Justice Stain, he would preside over the fundamental of a trial, once said this quote over William raping a 14-year-old girl. The quote is as follows. This is one of the grimliest cases of rape I have known in 15 years on the bench. It is difficult to be objective in this case. A young and very attractive girl, a virgin, until she was ravaged by Funda Marifa. This is the kind of person I am going to protect. After some time, William was confronted by his sister and her husband about the rapes, since it was stated in the news report that the rapist drove a blue combi, the only car William drove. He was sentenced to 29 days in a mental hospital for observation, where he was found fit to stand trial. On the 28th of February 1972, he was charged with five counts of rape and four for attempted rape and for theft. On the 22nd of March 1972, Mr. Justice Stain sentenced William to death, but it was the death sentence that was commuted to 20 years in prison instead. This was done by Mr. Chief Justice Ochliver Thomason, who disagreed with the death sentence. He said, and I quote, having regard to the number and the premeditated nature of these crimes and to the degree of criminality consistently exhibited over a considerable period, I remain unpersuaded and the sentence imposed by the court is inappropriate. So for the next 15 years, William was locked away in prison. He received parole on the 1st of March 1987, yet the public was only let know of his release in 1989. On the 4th of January 1989, William picked up two female hitchhikers. Christine, age 27, and Teresa, age 19. 
William was driving a white Mazda Bucky. It was later discovered that William carried three sets of handcuffs, rope, rubber gloves, several varieties of exotic condoms, and 29 screwdrivers. According to Teresa, William had agreed to take them to Cape Town, yet he needed to make a stop first. Once he made his stop, he ordered the woman by a gunpoint to get into the back of the truck, where he handcuffed them. He threatened them that if they screamed that he would cut off their breasts. He proceeded to rape the two women. He placed them back into the back of the bucky and drove until he was about 40 kilometers from Cape Town. This is where he raped them again, then he took Christine with him into the bushes. Teresa tried to escape but she was tied up so it was nearly impossible, but what she did do was she managed to get his trousers which he left behind and which held his gun. After a while William returned but without Christine, and William had a bloodied knife with him. Later police found Christine's body laying in a pool of her own blood. Teresa managed to pull the trigger of the gun and shot William in the head, yet he was still alive. Teresa managed to fire another shot, this time in his leg. She managed to find a knife and free herself. She kept running until she made it onto a nearby road where she was picked up and taken to the hospital. William died a few hours later, thus ending the reign of terror of the screwdriver rapist. Again, if I missed something about the case, please leave it in the comments section below. Until next time, bye!